Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing very well. This is the iConnectivity Audio 4C. It's an audio interface and the manufacturers say that you can connect it to two different USB sources at the same time and it will let you pass uh, multi-channel audio in between those two devices. Um, so if you could imagine you could have two doors on two different laptops with um, audio moving in between them. Now, that is an intriguing prospect for anyone that owns an Akai Force or an MPC, because potentially it means that we could take multi-channel uh, audio out of something like an iPad or a Machina Plus and route that into the Force and have it going into separate audio tracks, um, which would be fantastic for live performance so that you could uh, process sort of tracks separately. It would be the holy grail for me, and I think a lot of people would find it very useful. The problem is that um, very few people seem to be using these. Uh, I couldn't find a single video uh, demonstrating it being used in that manner with hardware um, uh, devices like the MPC or Force. Um, and when I went onto the various different Facebook groups or forums, um, very few people using it. And the people that are using it, the sort of responses were split 50-50 between people saying, yep, yeah, it works great and other people saying, no, it doesn't work, there's loads of latency and all that sort of thing. So given how powerful this could be, I thought it would be good to get hold of one and see if we can come up with a kind of a definitive answer as to whether it works for the Force and the MPC. Um, this isn't sponsored, I paid my own money for this. If it works, I'll keep it. If it doesn't work, I'll send it back. And as you can see, I've uh, this is unsealed. I've not even opened it yet. I've got no idea if this, this is gonna work. Um, so what I'm going to do is go off camera and basically plug everything in, read the manual, see if I can get it going, and I'll come back and report my findings. Um, and we will see if it does indeed allow us to bring multi-channel audio to audio tracks on the force from something like the iPad, or I will probably test it with the Machina Plus as well. So I'll be back as soon as I've got it working or not working. Okay, I'm back. And the first thing to say is that should someone from iConnectivity see this, uh, your tutorial videos suck. Um, they're really confusing. They don't answer any of the questions that someone using these kind of hardware devices are going to ask. Um, they're, in, they're very kind of tailored towards people using computers and iOS as well. Um, but that aside, um, on the force here, you can see um, our audio device is seeing the iConnectivity 4C, which is the interface just over it off camera. Um, and it is the forces is set to uh, input one or port one on the interface. And if we quickly have a look at this project, you can, this is a project, an old project of mine. I've added four audio tracks here, um, listening to inputs one and two, three and four, five, six, and seven and eight. So the force is listening to port one or input one on the iConnectivity uh, interface. Um, exactly as you would set this up just normally if you were using um, you know, an external interface on the force. So if we now move over to the Machine Plus, you can see that we're on the audio tab and that interface is set to um, audio 4C. You can't read, it doesn't scroll the whole name, but it's the same interface. And this is set or connected to port number two on the uh, audio 4C interface. So this is sending uh, audio to the force via the same um, interface and if we go to our tracks here I've got four groups set up and you can see if we, well, if we go to channel MIDI and group you can see the audio is going to external one two three and four which relates to tracks one two and three and four so if we go to volume now if we press play let's see what happens it works Little pop there, don't know if you heard that, there's a little click. So it's working. Uh, you can see if, if I go on to mute, you can see I can mute the tracks in now. So it works. This is this is a force internal track, so it's playing the two at the same time. I can't hear any latency issues with it. There are issues, which I'll get to in a minute. But you can see it does work. Which is great. Absolutely great. 
So uh, it, it works as advertised with big inverted commas here because there are some caveats I'm going to get onto in a minute. So this does work. I, I've done exactly the same thing with an iPad. I loaded up three or four different um, uh, iOS uh, instruments into an instance of AUM and had the same thing. I was able to get the tracks, uh, the, the multi-stream or the multi-channel audio going from the iPad into the force. Absolutely no problem. So on face value, it does work. Um, which is brilliant uh, to a degree. There are some caveats, so I'm going to uh, talk to you in a second about what the issues are, and then we'll see if we can draw a conclusion about whether this device is worth having or not. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, time to draw some conclusions. We've learned that this device here, the iConnectivity Audio 4C, does work with the Force. Um, we can use it to bring multi-channel uh, audio into the force and put it to uh, audio tracks. Um, up to eight stereo pairs it can do, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, the uh, Machine Plus and the force go together, well, chef's kiss. It's such a nice uh, kind of combination. Works with the iPad as well, and I'm sure there are other um, Groovebox type uh, devices it will work with. I guess if it's class compliant, then it, it should work. Um, however, as I said, there are some caveats or there's some issues with it and they fall um, broadly into two areas. The first is to do with companion software and the second is to do with stability. So we'll look at the software first. Um, the Audio 4C interface is a really clever device. You can use it for a bunch of different stuff, different configurations, and you set that up with a piece of companion software. Um, so you boot it up on the computer, plug your interface in, tell it what you want it to do, then you can unplug it and it stores that configuration, which is great. Um, however, the issue is that with the version of the companion software, which is current, which is being supported by iConnectivity, the way I just demonstrated to you, uh, where you've got the all of the audio tracks available for your USB is impossible to configure with the current um, uh, uh, companion software. And I think what they've done is this is a second gen device. It replaced an earlier version. And when this new version came out, they replaced the companion software as well. And they tried to make it idiot proof. So they took a lot of the configurability out um, and they basically put some presets in there. And as I said in the earlier bit of this video, the presets are very um, kind of geared towards um, people who are streaming, like gamers, that kind of thing, uh, people using iPads, the, all, all that jazz. But if you want all eight tracks available to pass from USB 2 to USB 1, you can't do it with the current uh, companion software that's available now. So to get this working, what I had to do was install the old version of their companion software, which has got a full audio patch bay in it. Uh, and it's called iConfig. Uh, and it's really easy to use. It just shows you like a list of uh, destinations and sources and you click uh, little, little dots and it draws lines and you can basically get it to work. So what you end up needing to do is the four analog inputs on the front of the device. You just need to disable those and reconfigure it so that it's listening to the USB inputs instead. So when you do that, you can have it set up like I had it set up, so you can send eight tracks of audio from USB 2 to USB A, which is what we want, or USB 1, I should say. Now, the problem with that is that that um, software, that iConfig software, um, has been superseded, and iConnectivity are no longer supporting it. So it works now, however, where one uh, Windows update or one Mac OS update away from it breaking and never working again. So if you're buying this device to use it in the way I've demonstrated it, to take audio from uh, iPad, eight tracks of uh, audio from an iPad into the force, there's no guarantee it will keep working. So like I said, even though you upload the sort of the configuration to the interface and it stays there, that's great. If you wanted to reconfigure it, uh, so you could use the uh, analog inputs, you'd need to go back to the companion software. If the device crashed and you needed to reboot it or reset it or do a firmware update, you'd need to use it again. So if that companion software stops working for any reason, 
um, you might lose this functionality that is the reason that you bought the interface for in the first place. That's a that's an iffy one. To me, I can live with it. I uh, I think that that isn't enough for me to want to stop using it. Um, I will uh, get in contact with uh, contact with Icon Activity and ask them if there's any chance that they can add that patch bay into the new software. We'll see. But that isn't a deal breaker for me. It's something I could deal with. The second issue is to do with stability. Now, when I plug this thing in. I expected latency to be an issue, and to be honest, I haven't heard any. Um, I I don't have the best ears, and I'm not the best. I'm not a brilliant musician, so it could be that it's there, and I'm not hearing it. But I haven't noticed it. I've played pads, you know. Uh, I've listened to the clicks of the two devices. The, there doesn't seem to be any noticeable latency to me, so that I haven't found to be an issue. However. There were the occasional pop and click, like uh, it, when I played you the test of uh, in the previous section, there was one pop that came up, and I have noticed one or two of them. However, it's not prevalent, it's not happening all the time, and when I was using a Tascan Model 12, I had more of an issue with those sorts of noises on the Model 12 than I have done with this. So that isn't uh, a, a deal breaker for me. However, there is an issue with it, and for some reason or other, it keeps dropping connection with USB 2. So the connection to USB 1, which is in our example that I showed you earlier, which is what the force was connected to, that seems to be rock solid. I never had a dropout or an issue with that. But with USB 2, the one that was connected to the uh, Machine Plus, uh, every now and again, it just dropped the connection and the USB stopped working. So the audio stopped flowing. Um, if I went into the Machine Plus and turned the interface setting to internal and then back to the eye connectivity, it immediately started again. Um, and I spent a little bit of time listening to it to see if this was a time, if there was a time interval and it was different every time. So it's not that. I messed about with sync uh, to see if it, the sync source had anything to do with it and that made no difference either. So there's an issue there that I haven't been able to get to the bottom of yet. Um, which is a problem. Like if I played it for half an hour, it would drop out two or three times. So if you were thinking of using this live, from my experience, you couldn't do that at the moment. It would get you in trouble, it would fail. If you're recording um, and you just want to record tracks and take multi-track uh, audio out of something like Machine Plus into Force, um, it perhaps isn't so much of an issue because if it does drop out, you can just record it again. Um, I wonder whether there's a setting somewhere or there's something I can change that I haven't found yet um, that might fix that. But at the moment, it is a definite issue. It, it, it reproduced over and over again. It didn't go away. So um, I think I'm going to keep it for a while and do a bit more explore, uh, exploration with it, a bit more experimentation. Because for me, being able to have the eight audio tracks or eight tracks coming out of Machine Plus into the Force... That is the perfect solution for me. I would sell my Digitone, I'd sell some of my other gear. That's all I would want to make music because I love the synths on the Machine Plus. I love the sampling and sequencing on the Force. Those two together, uh, it's just a perfect combination. So I'm going to persevere with it for a while, I think. Um, whether you choose to or not, or choose to buy one or not, I don't know. I would say if you if you are wanting to perform with it, then it's a definite no. It's not stable enough at the moment. There could be firmer updates. There could be things that I'll figure out. And if I do figure out how to stop that dropout issue, I'll do an update video. Um, the other thing with the librarian or the, the companion software, I am not too worried about that because it keeps, it's working at the moment. Um, if it was to stop working, you know what the internet's like, someone will come up with a, a way of, of porting it or making it work somehow. So that's like a half of an issue. So at the moment, the iConnectivity Audio 4C for our sort of use, for using with the Force and, and other uh, standalone devices, it's, it's a bit shonky, but it does work. Um, so it seems like it's almost there. I don't think there's any issue with the Hardware, the device, the interface itself, it seems to me to be a firmware or, a, or, a, or something like that. So I'm going to keep hold of this one for a while and I will update uh, or make an update video if anything changes. Um, one thing I should say, I've said all the way through this video for Akai Force and MPC, um, 
I don't actually have an MPC to test it with. I'm saying it works for both based on the fact that the internals are the same, but I can't actually test that. So if you are an MPC user, you might want to you know, give iConnectivity a buzz and see if it's the same. But anyway, um, that was a bit of a rambling conclusion. I hope it was useful. Uh, I was hoping to be blown away by this thing for it to really work. I was expecting it to be awful and to have terrible latency. Neither of those things were the case. It's somewhere in the middle. It works pretty well and it works until it doesn't work. And I think that's enough for me to keep it. So anyway, I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.